stand and sing unto the Lord. Jesus is our friend. It's prayer meeting night. Praying for our country. Praying for our people. Praying for souls to be saved. Because when the roll is called up yonder, they can be there. Amen. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen one shall gather home beyond the sky and the roll is called up yonder i'll be there when the roll From the dawn till setting sun Let us talk of all His wondrous love and care And when all of life is over And our work on earth is done And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll Up yonder, I'll be there. Are you glad you're here tonight? Say amen. Hey, we could be in worse places, I tell you. We could be uh, in hell tonight, uh, but we're not. We're in a, a church setting, and we get to listen to good music, sing good music, and listen to preaching. Notice I didn't say good preaching. I don't want to get your hopes up, but uh, uh, we're, we're in a blessed place tonight. Amen. And uh, we, need to, we do need to pray for our country. Uh, we need to pray for, uh, you know, all that's going on. I guess everybody's followed what's going on. Uh, we don't have a, we still have a president, amen. I, I'll go further than that. We still have a, a king. His name is Jesus, amen. <laughs> uh, so let's pray. We do need, we have some outstanding requests real quick. We'll take up some requests in a moment. But uh, Lola's daughter, Brenda, has been struggling with cancer for many years and uh, I was informed that she's, uh, they've given her a week to live. And let's just pray for Cross and Grace. As far as I know, she's saved. Uh, and also, Candy's not feeling well. Br uh, uh, Burton Hewitt has the, the work of the, the uh, mechanic shop up here. He has stress tests tomorrow. We're going to pray for him. And also, uh, as far as I know, she, uh, Rebecca hadn't had the baby yet. Anybody heard anything different? They induced her, so she must still be. And that's unusual. Usually after, after uh, several children, uh, babies come a little easier. But, uh, uh, so maybe they, they put it off. I don't know. I don't know the details. So let's pray now. Open up service. We're excited to be here. Hey, this could be the last night. This could be it. Hey, look, look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. I'm telling you, I'm going up like Superman. And I don't need no cape. Amen. Uh, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the privilege of being on the Wednesday night prayer meeting. Thank you for these dear folks that made their way out tonight, knowing the, the necessity to pray. And Lord, I realize this whole service just really needs to be us talking to you. But Lord, help us to fellowship, help us to worship you, help us to get a touch from heaven tonight. And we do pray for these requests already. We, we lift them up to you and we ask you to be merciful to us. And Lord, I know we all deserve what we, we deserve uh, what we get, uh, we, we reap what we sow. And I pray, Lord, that tonight uh, that we might uh, be able to pray through some things and get some peace about some things. And Lord, some of our people that are being heavily attacked right now, they're not here. I pray, Holy Ghost, that you might touch them. And uh, Lord, remove the fear that's away. And, and Lord, help people see that the devil's attacking. It's not, it's not government, it's not uh, one another, but I know it's the devil and he's trying to do, do something horrible to us. Uh, God, we, we claim the victory tonight. 
We thank you for the joy that comes through salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn around and just wave at each other if you would. Had less people here. Uh, we've had less, so don't don't uh, don't be fearful. A uh, couple things I want to ask, uh, and you can spread spread the word uh, to other people if you would. Could you turn me up just a half a? It just seems like there you go. That's that's. I have a certain sound I want to hear. Um, uh, uh, several things I want to. I need to ask you, uh, and not everybody's here, but you can spread the word. Is uh, uh, the Burkhammers, of course, moved away, and we need somebody, to, uh, a family or people, to take over their week one of cleaning the church. We, we, we right, you're, you, you, but you're going, but. Well, I need somebody to take one of those. He ought not have to do the two two weeks. So, uh, I'll, I'll give you time to pray and fast and seek God. And all right, we got week one right here. That praise the Lord. All right, there, right there. So, so we know Tony and, and the family, and you're going to be swabbing toilets and all that. By the way, I got toilet number two in the women's bathroom unplugged. Amen. The, the preacher still got it. Amen. <laughs> Abby called me and said, "We I can't get it undone. I, I know how to do it. Just pow." <laughs> I change. Hey, how many? How many Baptists does it take to change the light bulb? That's for sure. Well, it helped. I turned the lights off. You know, uh, you know, I had lights on and that was out. And I'm sitting there looking up in there and I'm, I'm looking like a deer in headlights, going, All right. "Turn the lights off." Uh, and then also Saturday, we are calling an emergency work day. We need your help Saturday uh, to to because we are planning on we're we're, we're Praying that we'll have the CO on Friday. Tomorrow is going to be a work day for some of you. We've already talked to some of you about this, but Saturday is a, a day we've got to get everything that don't need to be in that in the building out, and the floors need to be mopped, and there's some walls that need to be wiped down a little bit, and just you know gussied up a little bit. And uh, and so we're praying for that. If we're not in, if if they don't come on Friday, sometimes they come the next day. Sometimes it might be the next on Monday. That hopefully next week, by the latest next week that we'll have our CO and then we'll be good to go. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we need your help. Uh, let's do uh, nine. Uh, well, should we say nine on Saturday, nine o'clock on Saturday? It'll be good. Nine o'clock. Uh, and by the way, if you're scheduled to clean, if you're scheduled to do yard work, if you cannot do that, you call, get that list that we have. It's, I think there's some in there. They're they're scattered around. Call somebody and just let them know. Somebody else who cleans or get somebody to clean. Because because uh, there's been times when people hadn't called and it didn't get cleaned. It, it, the yard didn't get done. And just call and ask somebody, would you cover for me? That would be great. Uh, or call me and say, hey, I can't get a hold of anybody. At least we can uh, brace ourselves for whatever. But uh, uh, please help us out with that. That would be a blessing. Uh, so Saturday at 9 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow... Um, we're, we, we've got, uh, I'm trying to get several people together. Ronnie, uh, he's doing security, uh, is going to be out here. Brent said he could try to be out here. Uh, John's going to try to be out here. He's, he's going to work on the, the handicap, uh, lettering, but we're going to fill this hole out here. If any of you want to come out and help out a little bit, that'd be great. I've got a few other things. I've got a new light for the parking lot that goes up on the side of the, the overhang that lights up the parking lot better because this time of year is kind of dark. And that one burnout, Chinese burnout, but I got a new Chinese, so maybe it'll last longer, a little bit longer. Uh, so there are a few things that we can. Uh, I want to replace the rest of the lights in the in the hallway with the same bulbs so it'll look the same. Y'all notice stuff like that? I know Tony didn't. I asked him, but, but I noticed stuff like that. It's just me? Okay. Um, but uh, is, that, is that all, Junior? Is anything, anything else need to be aware of? Junior, oh, where? I'm, I think you're over there. Is there anything else you need to be aware? Of? Uh, I'm sorry, y'all have beards now, so. Junior, Gary. <laughs> he, he, Junior, he, Gary. Related, We're yeah. in West Virginia. That way. Smile again? No. <laughs> that was a joke. Okay. All right. Uh, praises this week. Uh, uh, hey, we're here. Uh, don't be doom and gloom. I know dark, the, the getting dark earlier always puts a little bit of sleepiness on us. Um, 
But, but I, I want us to really pray. Uh, I, I can't, I really can't, I can't put my head around why, um, why people are still being afraid of the virus as, as much as they are and not coming. And all we can do is pray for those dear folks and, 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 and hope that they see the need to serve the Lord and, and be in church. And I've called a few and they, and they're just afraid. And, and I, I, it'd help if you call them too and just encourage them. Just encourage them. But uh, I praise the Lord that uh, that that I don't have that. I mean, I I, I don't want to. Well, I ain't going to do it. What would happen if I did that? But so I ain't going to be here. I'm scared. You know, and 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 I'm sure there's some pastors that do that. That they just they'll kick out. And I, hey, we got to keep on going for Jesus. I mean, you, we lived in the dark ages, and they had the black plague and everything else going around. We've got to keep on going for Jesus. And when, when statistics come out and they say 99.6% of the people are recovering from this, that's, that's, I mean, more people die of the stomach flu, you know, that type of stuff. And, uh, but anyway, so let's pray for those dear folks that they get back in church and in prayer meeting, praying for our country, praying for our president and, uh, and the, whoever else may get in. We just, we just need to pray. Uh, how, any more praises, Leslie? Amen. Amen. Mamaw, you ready to run up now now? You got two good hips now. She's the only one in here don't limp. Amen. Everybody. Uh, anybody else with a praise? Come on, dig, dig deep. Mom. Amen. Amen. All that aggravation, all it took was a little pill. Amen. Anybody else for the praise? Susan? Wow. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That is good. I, I have a blessing on ATMC. The, 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 something happened back when the credit card thing got messed up, whatever, and the bill was higher and it didn't make, it, it was confusing. So I called them to get it clarification. And I said, is there any way we can save any money? And they said, you won't believe this, but if you, if you uh, sign up to go to the hi higher, like 250 whatever megs, it's $10 cheaper a month. Get more for less. When do you, hey, I mean, you can't get that. Only, only other place you get more for less is on that chip table back there. Amen. Amen. So I know I, I, I was sitting in my office and Shepard come in and you, you thought that uh, uh, Armageddon had taken place because he, he, he went by my, my, my door with a handful of chips. Where, where, you, you did, listen to him. I did? You done forgot that quick? Oh, there, oh, 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 threw her under the bus. Oh, 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 oh that was sweet. You did. Okay, all right. Um, I tell you, and, and of course, if you haven't noticed, there may be a few bags back there. We got some Italiano, uh, kettle chips, Mom. You like those? But it's got the pizza from the Garibaldi's or something, G, some, some Italian. John, what's that? Did you see it, Giorelli's or Giordelli's? So they're okay. There's there's a bag in the in the kitchen, by the way, that I opened to taste them. If somebody wants to take that home, there's just a few taken out of it, and and I, all the germs are gone. <laughs> any, any any other praises? Praise praise the Lord! You're alive. You ate something today. Yes, uh, Christy.
Amen. Is that Amanda? Is that right? Wow. Praise the day off and travel. Brent going to give you a big love offering? <laughs> Amen. Anybody else have a praise? Uh, something good? Yes, go ahead. Amen. 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 This revival sounds like you. Revival. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God knows what He's doing. He's reeling us all in closer and closer, but some of y'all wagging your head back and forth. You're gonna, you're gonna, yeah. Don't fight it. Just, just do like uh, Virginia Mullet. Just go, right? Who else has a, a praise? Praise you. Something good's happened. Wonderful. No, that's it. Richard. Amen. Amen. Well, then I have a praise. We don't have a food budget. <laughs> if we want it, we buy it, right? No, uh, no within reason. We buy the, the, the generics, of course, all the time. So what is this? Uh, I, I want to praise the Lord that uh, I haven't taken any medication today other than my heart, heart medicine. Amen. Although you may think I'm on something else. I'm just the joy of the Lord. It's 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 good to feel good. I can tell you, it's bad to feel bad, for sure. Uh, anybody else have a praise? Keely. Amen. Yeah, uh, we brought uh, brought uh, <clears throat> the, I guess the church mascot in yesterday, the Oliver, her dog. And uh, he gave me an illustration. He, he, well, he come in and he sniffed all the kids. He just went around and he sniffed out the ones that didn't wear deodorant, you know. But, uh, no, but he, I put him in my office and he got up on the chair and he was looking through the window of my door and he, 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 he couldn't reach. He, he, he was wanting so bad to look. He was trying, just like a little kid, so bad he wanted to see those kids. And, and he, 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 he kept trying to do it. And he put his paws out and he, and he missed the door, and he, his head went right in the door, and boom, and, boom, boom, and fell. I said, that's what we do. We, we're so bad want to see what's in the world that, that we get hurt in the process of just looking. And I said, learning from, a, learning from Oliver, for sure. Anybody else have a praise, a uh, prayer request? Uh, let me go over some of the prayer requests real quick. We need to pray for Buford. That's... Uh, um, Phyllis's dad, he's, he's, uh, I guess she said he's kind of give up. He's 96, 97, 98, and uh, his cancer. So pray for Phyllis. And, and, and he's not, as far as I know, we're not, he's not saved. Super nice guy. So let's pray for Buford. Lola's daughter, Brenda, has cancer. Keep praying for her. It has a week to live, they said. But uh, Brother Olin King, we support. I think I told you about this a few weeks ago. They told him uh, 20 years ago, he had stage four cancer of some sort. He never took chemo or nothing. He's still alive. So uh, God God works in mysterious ways. Um, you need to pray for the Gupton family. And uh, uh, God knows all about that. Just really pray. The devil's trying to strip strip our families apart and everything. Uh, pray, for, pray for the Longs as well. And everybody else you don't see around here. That uh, Brother David Willoughby, he's doing well on his chemo, but of course he needs to stay away while his immune system is really low, uh, not just COVID, just with anything. So <clears throat> anybody else have a prayer request? 
Uh, yes, Susan. Yes. Linda has a bronchial pneumonia. I did talk to her and have prayer with her. She's uh, in good spirits, but just miserable. You know, just the, the solid junk. Richard. Right, right. Let's pray for the Richard's neighbor. Uh, also, um, Eleanor, uh, they she had fallen, but just they had over medicated her. So that's a good thing. She's recovering. Sore. Anybody else for prayer requests? Uh, Susan and Paige, go ahead. Okay. Let's pray for Anne's cousin, uh, Miss Gay, is in ICU. Let's pray for her. Paige? Yeah, Mavericks is Esther's son. He broke his collarbone and sternum, but he is improved. His elbow, too? Pelvic. Maybe not his sternum, his pelvic, but yeah, okay. It busted up pretty good. Uh, pretty bad, I should say. Anybody else with a prayer request? Norma? Okay. Uh, let's pray for Clay Smith. Some of y'all remember Clay. I got to see him, talk to him today. And God's working in his heart. So that's a, a blessing. Anybody else have a prayer request? Yes, Miss Janet. Hmm. Friend, Pat, okay. Let's pray for those families. Yeah, that's sad. Uh, anybody else? Chrissy? Mike? Oh, man. Let's pray for Robin. That's not good. You got the lung lung problems. Gotcha. Let's pray for that gentleman on on the ventilator or John. Okay, Chrissy? Okay. Anybody else? Don't forget missionaries, Carolyn. Sure. Dementia. And... Let's pray for Okay. Oh, I got you. Let's pray for Faye and Tom. Keely? Anybody else with unspokens? Let's pray for lost loved ones as well. You have lost loved ones, you raise your hand. You pray. Are we ready to, don't forget our missionaries. Uh, we're lining up things. Uh, we're, we're praying too, by the way, we get in the building, we're going to have a Christmas party in the building. That'll be exciting. And, and uh, Thanksgiving's around the corner. Week after next, the schools, uh, uh, the older part of the school's going to Kentucky for their, whatever you call it, senior trip or just just uh kill the pastor trip and um <laughs> yeah, yeah i gotta drive being in the, in the bus with all of them I, uh, yeah and for you and shepherd's birthday is the 17th he is uh he's wanting uh whatever you'll give him amen are you ready to pray uh let's pray for our nation let's pray Let's seek the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the privilege to 
be able to come to church and listen to your people uh, give you praise and give you honor. Uh, Lord, I just want to thank you. Just want to be grateful. Lord, thank you for the for the bad times and the good times, Lord, for the ups and downs of life. Lord, we just want to be grateful that we have a home that's already been prepared, a place for us to go to be with you forever. And Lord, we magnify your name. We, we worship you tonight. We give you glory. You're wonderful counselor. You're my savior, Lord. You're my friend. You're my... You're my redeemer. Lord, I give you the glory, give you honor. You're worthy of our time. You're worthy of our, of our life, our finances, all, all that's about us. Help us to give ourselves more and more to you. Lord, we come before you and we, we ask you, we beg you, be merciful to our country. Lord, let right prevail, let wrong be uh, put down, Lord. Let let the right uh, righteousness uh, uh, be seen, and, and the crookedness and the cheating be be done away with. Lord, I know that when the righteous uh, prevail, the the people rejoice. And God, I want to rejoice. I pray you be merciful to us, and and let the right things happen, and help us to trust you, and depend on you, uh, in every every area of our life. I, I thank you, Lord, for our, our men and, and, and the women that have uh, do the work around this church and clean and, and uh, Lord, those that are uh, do the yard and those who worked on the building. And Lord, I thank you for those who come out tomorrow and help uh, get that ditch done and the few little things done so we can we can get in that building. Lord, help us to be uh, to be a part of the this expansion of the ministry you've given us Lord uh, I come to you now on behalf of these people that have been sick and those that are lost Lord Buford needs salvation God I pray before it's eternally too late he turned to you pray for Phyllis I know it's heavy on her heart we pray for Brenda Lola's daughter that you would touch her and Lord draw people to you through that the, the terrible uh, thing of cancer we lift up the Guptons Lord, you know that situation. We, we beg you for help. For the longs, uh, Lord, we, we miss them. We pray, Lord, that you come back to church. Lord, for, for the David and Kay, and we love them, and we pray for health for them. Uh, for Linda, Lord, I know she's got that pneumonia. Touch her and heal her. And Virginia, to her, her sister-in-law. Lord, we pray for Richard's neighbor's mothers that have the hip problem. Uh, let her have some ease of pain. For Eleanor, let her get back on her feet, I pray. And for Anne's cousin Gay, I pray, Lord, that you'd help her. For Maverick, that he would heal. Do pray for Esther and Petey. And uh, Lord, for uh, enormous friend Kate with the mass in her head. Lord, help him. Clay, uh, Lord, I appreciate you sending him in my way. It's encouraged me today. Help him and his family. I pray for the Bowling's family that's lost friends, Janet's other friend that had, had passed. And comfort them, I pray. We lift up Robin to you, Lord. I know falling is, is, is very painful. And Lord, I pray that she didn't break nothing or hurt anything, that she'd, she'd feel better in the morning. Uh, Lord, we pray for Mike's friend John in the hospital that's struggling to breathe. I pray, God, that you, you touch him and help him tonight. Tom and Faye, Lord, you know their their physical issues help them as well. And for the unspokens, the lost loved ones we have, I pray you meet those needs. Our missionaries, Lord, I pray for Miss Mary and Miss, uh, Brother Ronnie and uh, Bobby and Glenda tonight. Uh, we pray for the Wolfords aren't here, God, you, you'd help them. And we do pray for the uh, Burke Hammers too, and we miss them and uh, all those folks. Our bus kids and. Lord, Miss Tina, I think of her, and um, Lord, I, I just, I just want to say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. It would be wonderful if you'd come. I pray for Aubrey and uh, Nancy. And, uh, Lord, we, we, we call on you now, Lord. We ask you now, to, if it be Thy will, 
let these requests be uh, made uh, uh, answered in, in the way that you see fit and we, we would be satisfied. Lord, give us perfect peace tonight because we're going to get our mind stayed on you. I ask you to continue to send us laborers and lab laborers. Uh, send us some leaders. Lord, send us, send us souls to be saved and discipled. I pray that baby of, of the heart is going to be born healthy and Lord, we add, add to the church that way. That's, that's a wonderful way to be with Matt and Rebecca. May they, they uh, enjoy that time together as family. Lord, sweet Jesus, anoint uh, these lips tonight. And may you get all the glory in Jesus' name. You want to sing that? Amen. God bless you. Ain't nothing like praying for a little while and just talking to them. But we're going to sing now. We can sing that way. Talk to them that way. Let's all stand and sing all three verses of Save, Save. sing during the offertory and uh, come on up miss kathy and i appreciate y'all giving and supporting me we're getting close to christmas i started looking for christmas presents today and uh yeah i didn't find none for myself but uh uh no uh, uh, i hope i hope you're preparing god what 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 does god need that he don't have us junior's heard that before had he that's right. He's got. He can create everything else, but he can't create us to. He's not going to force us to love him. And I think we can just say, Lord, I want to get a little closer. I want to love on you a little bit more, just like that little dog. Sometimes that dog gets in my face, and I'm like, Don't lick my face. And he'll put his face next to mine, and he'll 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 kind of go like that, and he knows, he knows. Just like I know that when he has a bone, don't stick my finger down there because he got me one time. The last time he got him, he's limping now. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You ready to give tonight? Give of your heart, would you please? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the offering. Lord, that we can give more of finances. Uh, we can give something other than finances. We can give ourselves tonight. And Lord, help us give us 
Uh, Lord, bless our people. Lord, encourage them tonight through your word. Encourage them the fact they did the right thing being in church. Lord, uh, bless uh, this offering. Bless this song Miss Kathy's going to sing in Jesus' name. Amen. Microphones are falling apart. They're not but 15 years old. So uh, the microphones are older than some of you youngins in here. Amen. 
Uh, you can turn that down a little bit. I don't know what, everything gets messed up occasionally. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I don't even know what time it is. Is it time for preaching? Amen. I know you're in church. Sorry for the text, but I want you to let you know the baby is here. Baby's doing great. Uh, more details later. God bless you. He said, thank you everyone for praying. Amen. Well, we know that it's here. Don't know what boy, girl, how long, how much it weighs. Uh, but thank the Lord that it's healthy. Or it, amen. Uh, so, do I now? We just prayed the baby. <laughs> I just, hush, Chris, hush. I'm talking to my brain here. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, this is a chapter that most people think of when they think of the uh, book of Ecclesiastes, at least in my opinion. Uh, it's Solomon's practical review of what life is all about in the temporal and in the eternal. Uh, books like these can help every one of us believe, uh, uh, believe better and to live a more balanced life. Um, it's, it's, it's here to help us understand that that balance is everything about your life. Every part of your life needs to be balanced. Uh, even down to the vitamins running through your bloodstream, there's got to be a proper balance. You know, a lot of older people uh, suffer from certain things. That, when I say older, I'm including myself, like a D, a vitamin D deficiency and B, B deficiencies. There's not a balance, and so you have... You have problems if you're not a balance of water or sodium. Or you have too much potassium even on that level. Uh, but I'm talking about balance of time, balance of treasure, balance of, uh, uh, of, of everything. Uh, and we all tend to say um, about things in our life, uh, we, we tend to all say this at times, uh, I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why. I don't understand. What's the point? And these, ver these 22 verses here tonight can help us answer these questions and even more. I think that as we study the Scriptures uh, that we begin to be more balanced and understand what God is all about and what He's trying to do. Solomon had been given wisdom from God to comprehend life and he had all the resources he needed in order to live out this experiment of life. And so you understand what's taking place in this book is that Solomon's living out an experience. He, he put his heart into everything. He, he tried everything, good, bad, and indifferent. And we cover that in, in chapter 1. He called it vanity. And here he goes into a little bit more detail. And uh, he's trying to let you know that uh, God has blessed him uh, God gave him the opportunity to experience these things so we don't have to. Uh, it's kind of like when mamas and daddies tell you, well, you know, I did that when I was growing up. I don't want you to make the same mistakes. And here we have the scriptures where did Solomon make a lot of mistakes? Oh boy, didn't he? And he was a smart guy. Can I tell you this? Can I be as bold as this to say some, some of our society, of our church, may be more intelligent, but they suffer with more sin because of intelligence. Yes, Facebook, yes. The smarter you are, sometimes the more crippled you are by sin. Because uh, smart people justify. They, they reason it out. They say, well, that don't mean that. That, don't, you know, that doesn't, that's whatever. That means they're talking to the Jews. They're talking to the, this. Or they're not talking to me or whatever. Uh, but uh, just the, the poor and ignorant, amen, that's the category I'm in. Poor, unlearned, and ignorant. Uh, should we be uh, proud? We shouldn't be proud of that, but I, I should say that no matter how, if I could quote the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I'd still claim to be, I don't understand it all. And I don't know it all. And I can't quote it like that either. So uh, Solomon had all these resources he needed in order to live out an experience of life so that he could teach us through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and, and write these things down. What is the importance of his discoveries? What are the importance? They are meant to be learned and applied to our lives to help navigate our life with the right perspective and attitudes. We read this tonight. We're going to read it. and we're going to, it's, it's meant to help navigate our life. And so we look at these first few verses, we're going to uh, read along in uh, uh, verse, first eight verses, Solomon expresses this about what he experiences in, his, in this experiment. 
he, he expresses about life that life must be balanced. It must be balanced. If you look at the Scriptures, it says, To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, which we just added to the church today. Isn't that wonderful? That the new hearty that's a part of the church. And a, and a time to die. We've heard of friends that have passed away. Uh, a time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck up that which was, is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A, a, time, to, a, a, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Interesting how he puts this in perspective. It's for every one side, there's the opposite. So it naturally should draw our mind to that life should be, and life is really balanced. And I want you to get a hold of this. When you are going through troubles or when troubles are covering you over, I can guarantee you if I research your problem, your life is out of balance. It's not about, preacher, I don't have no money. Well, you've been tithing, you're out of balance. Uh, preacher, I don't know why uh, uh, all this, these problems are happening. Well, let's look at your life. Are you out of balance? Uh, you see, being out of balance causes you to think wrong. Causes you to put focus on your circumstances rather than focusing on what God has declared to be a balance in life. What are those balances? Uh, there's a, to, to everything is a season and every purpose under, under heaven. He's, he's declaring to us that you're going to have seasons in your life. Isn't it amazing that our seasons are three months apiece? We have seasons. So if you're going to have a wonderful spring, if you're going to have a beautiful spring, well, you must understand there's going to be a fall. If you're going to have a wonderful summer and, and gloriously summer, where well, you're going to have a winter. Uh, in order to... Uh, to realize what life's all about. There's birth, but you've got to get balanced and realize there's death too. You see, when things are out of perspective, out of balance, you go through life and say, well, I'm, a, I'm saved now. I can just live like I want to do. And you get out of balance and you think you're never going to die. You think you're never going to reap where you sow. And it gets it at unbalance and you start thinking wacky. We become miserable when we forget that life must be balanced. You're miserable. Just like, here's a good example. Uh, there was a time that on Wednesday night we'd have, we'd have 50 some kids that'd be packed out there and we'd have, we'd have 30 to 50 people in the sanctuary and we'd have uh, may, potentially even uh, up uh, close to 100 back there. We had a time of, of bounty. But now where are they at? You say, oh man, God, God hates us. And God, uh, uh, uh. Well, if it was always, if you think about keeping it always up and up and there's never, there's never no time to cycle, there's never a balance and it's always like that. You know what happened? You know what happens? We burn out. It, what, it, that's what happened. It, the season changed. The, uh, the motives were uh, realized and we, we understood and as a pastor, I understood what I need to do. Um, it's not, it's not an easy thing to accept sometimes, but when you realize that uh, life is out of balance in how you think. Let's go over these real quick. Uh, time to be born, time to die. We understand that. Time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Uh, what's the most thing that's plucked up every year? You plant tomato plants, and this time of year you pluck them up, don't you? Well, well that's unfair. Why can't they live through the winter? Well, I'll put them in a hothouse. I'll do whatever. Well, because God intended for that plant and, and a lot of plants, to, to have a season of death. And that they propagate through seeds, not through keeping the vine alive forever and ever. So again, it's that balance that we have to understand. If you don't have a perspective of that balance or a proper perspective, you're going to get mad. You're going to stay angry. You're going to be fearful. You're going to be upset. You're going to be uncertain about life. You're going to be confused. This is a time to kill and a time to heal. Now, kill don't mean your neighbor. I believe it's talking about killing germs maybe, maybe killing animals for food. And, and then it's talking about healing. There's, there's a time that you, you have to put old yeller down. 
Okay? And then, there, then uh, think about the balance of this is that you had to put Old Yeller. I'm trying to, some of y'all already know who Old Yeller is. Who knows who Old Yeller is? Who doesn't? Well, just a couple. Well, you go, Disney made a movie. You can watch it. <clears throat> so they had to shoot Old Yeller. And so that was a time to kill, right? Because he, he had rabies or was ravenous. And so then the, the, the opposite, the balance of that is a time to heal. So we're looking at the mourning, the grieving of losing something, but then, there's, then it, that begets a time to heal and a time to grow. So it goes on and it says a time to break down and time to build up. And it, <clears throat> we all know this, Shepherd, you build up. I've bought Shepherd over the years and people's giving them stuff. That, some of you Lego people, how many of y'all know what a Lego is? And they buy you those, those inexpensive Legos, right? You know, that little box that's $25 and it builds a little ship or builds a little something, and we get it all built, and, and then it's time to build up, and then you tear it all down. You're like, what in the world? That's, I'm using my new Lego analogy there. Uh, but it could be breakdown, talking about uh, maybe breaking down pride in your life, maybe building some up encouragement, a time to weep and a time to laugh. There's an appropriate time. There's a balance. <clears throat> you ever met somebody that's, very, that's always just... There's no, it's just all lopsided. They're all doom and gloom. Or then you have the other wackos that are all just like high on dope or something. There's got to be balance. When you see people that are, <laughs> you think, what's wrong with them? And you see people always, I hate my shoelaces. You say, what's wrong with them? What's wrong is this, is they've got out of perspective what life's all about. Life isn't about always being one way or a one, uh, having a, it all, always your way, everything going the way you want it. Life is a balance. You're going to have a time of life, but there will be a time of death. There will be a time to laugh. There'll be a time to weep. There'll be a time to mourn and a time to dance. That's not dancing after your loved one dies, but is it? See, not without perspective, you would think, well, we're just supposed to, we're just supposed to kick a can. But it says after a time to mourn is a time to dance. So the balance is the mentality God wants us to get in our brain is that there's a balance that I shouldn't mourn forever. I should stop at some point and pick that time to balance out the days that I mourn. I need to rejoice and celebrate through dancing. It ain't the watermelon crawl either. Amen. Ain't boot scoot boogie or anything like that. It's dancing before the Lord. It's a, it's a celebratory. I believe jumping up and down, waving your hands. Uh, it's not the, it's it's not the, uh, the the shag or, or or the the Charleston. Then it says a time to cast stones, cast away stones, and a time to gather them together. A time to work, a time to put up and put put away. A time to embrace, time to refrain from embracing. There's emotional. There's a lot that can be said here. I don't have time to get into it. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent, a time to speak. That's one I have problems with. A word fitly spoken is like apples, gold, and pictures of silver. So although communicators tend to get things more, uh, they get more things done because they're communicators, sometimes communicators over-communicate and they wear people out. Under-communicators do the same thing because you have to pull everything out of them. You, you have to ask them everything. Which one are you? Are you unbalanced? Are you unbalanced? Do you talk too much or you don't talk enough? You know, we're supposed to, this is, this is how marriages go, and Leslie and I have pretty much, we've, we've passed that threshold, and some of y'all have been married a while, is that uh, I, I don't, she knows what I'm thinking, and I know what she's thinking most of the time. Y'all you, been there? Yeah, you've been married long enough. And, uh, but early on, I'd get mad because she didn't do this for me or buy this at the store, or my favorite this, and, and I said, well, why didn't you do that? She goes, well, I didn't know. I was supposed to know that. Well, I didn't communicate it. Then there was some, I don't know when it was, maybe 10 or 12 years ago, I, I learned something, I don't know if it was through the five love languages or something, I learned that, you know what, I can get a lot from my wife if I've just talked to her, speak to her, tell her what I want, what I need, and if she communicates with me, by the way, same things happens in church, same things happen with God. 
You have not because you ask not. So are you unbalanced? And you're unbalanced, you're frustrated. If you're not a talker, and I'm not trying to change your personality, if you're not a talker and you're frustrated with people, you're frustrated with your spouse, it might be because you're not balanced enough, you need to learn to talk. And it may be if you're overly talk, you run your mouth so much that the other one can't get a word in edgewise, you need to tone it down, you need to balance. You need that ba- Junior, you said that a little loud. I don't know. I, and Susan, x-ray vision just burnt, burnt a hole inside your face. Or, <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> all right. I'm going to be working on that marriage tomorrow. Amen. Um, <laughs> so think about it. Unbalanced life, it makes, you, it makes you mad. It makes you sad. It makes you uncomfortable. Uh, when, when we have a balanced expectation, when you're unbalanced in these areas, but you have a you expect it to be balanced. You expect life to go just smooth. It's just everything's about uh, we, on our bus. We have uh, uh, we can uh, it has a way to level the bus and be balanced to level it. And but we only have about six to eight inches of work. And there's been most of the churches we're in at we're walking down we're walking down the bus like this, and we sleep with our head up or, or down or whatever because you can't level but so much with the the leveling uh, things that we have in it. Uh, and it's it's aggravating. When I look down the down the bus and I'm I'm looking like this, and it just for me it aggravates me. And I try you try to fix it, whatever. Uh, it's uncomfortable. You know what I'm getting at? Just like life, you, you, some of y'all you stay aggravated, you stay agitated, or you stay sad, or you're full of fear, but you won't do nothing to change it. You got to bounce. There is a time to be afraid. If somebody walked in here and his body parts were falling off and he was throwing up and, and gagging and, and throw, you know, and coughing and sneezing, I don't know about you. I'd push y'all up to them and I'd say, I'm going to go pray. I mean, I, that'd be time to be afraid, wouldn't it? Someone that has some, but, but often we, we stay afraid of anybody. You walk through Walmart, there ain't nobody in Walmart. You hear somebody sneeze and you're like, oh, we're going to die. You know, it's not balanced. So here's the example of what they're talking about. Nobody should die. We always should win. Nothing bad should ever happen to me. You are off balance. You have not woke up to the real world. I, 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 there, I have been young and now I am old. <laughs> uh, and we know that there's, it, there will be balance. God will bring balance to our life in eternity. But we have to keep the balance. Understand what God's balance is. There's a time to be born and there's a time to die. A time of war and a time of peace. In our age of fictional movies and stories that show one-sided caricatures uh, that, that have it all, you think all these Disney movies and Marvel and all that, you know, they're, they're Superman, they're Wonder Woman, they're all these, and they're just, they, they got looks, they got style, they got powers, and, and, and they're warping our minds and our perspective of what life's all about. You know, only the, you know, the only superhero there is? is a soul winner Christian. Amen. That's a superhero. Someone that cares enough about somebody else. That they'll... But even at that, that's got to be balanced. I remember several years ago, we had a, a guy in our church, or I, I, I don't know if I, well, that was something else. It was uh, they, the pre, a preacher, an older preacher told me this. He said, don't get me wrong. Don't throw me under the bus. He said, but you can soul win too much. You can talk about soul winning too much. You can preach about soul winning too much. Just like anything. You can talk about it too much where it becomes white noise. You, you can, and that's with any subject. There has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. You know, the, in fundamentalism, there's some groups that say, you ain't right with God if you're not soul winning three or four or five hours a day. There's, that ain't a balance, buddy. That's way over. That's just, we're a light all the time. We got our light on, but it don't, God doesn't say we have to go door to door seven, eight hours a day. In our days of, of, uh, of lopsidedness and false balance, in Proverbs 1, 11, 1 says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is His delight. In Proverbs 16, 11, a just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are, uh, are His work. In Proverbs 20 and verse 23, driver weights are an abomination unto the Lord and a false balance is not good. And they're talking about a, you know, something like of this uh, that had the... where. where uh, you, you have a weight on this side and you know what I'm talking about and you have a counterweight here. So you scales, some of y'all that used to be in marijuana, you know what scales are. Uh, you'd have, you know, you have ounces over here and then you're pounds over here. You have a pound weight and then you put it over here and whatever it would be the pound, it would, it would be balanced. You see the balance? 
you see that balance. But what they would do, and God says an abomination, is that those those retailers would were, were be uh, uh, be uh, cheaters like uh, the, the 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 Bidens and the D Democrats. They'd cheat, and they would uh, they would they would hollow out the weights. So a 16 ounce, a one pound weight, they would be maybe 10 ounces. So so you'd have to pay more for less. And God says abomination. It's not right. Everything needs to be balanced. Am I balanced all the time? No. No. Are you balanced all the time? No. Should we look at where we're not balanced and try to fix that? Yeah. That's all, all God's trying to tell. The balance, of, if understood and accepted, will help us in life to graduate to the next. In other words, it's going to make life a whole lot smoother that when time comes, when you, when you see a time, uh, uh, you see your life's being broke down. It, it just everything's breaking in your life. Maybe your body, maybe your finances. But, but then you, you get balanced and you don't freak out. You don't all of a sudden curl up in a fetal position and quit on God and quit church and, and cuss God. You read the next verse and it says the time to build up. Sometimes you've got, I, I've heard this over the years, Sometimes the church has to be purged in order to grow. Amen. I don't like it. You want everybody to stay, but sometimes it's got to be purged. It is amazing. I have learned this over the years, that there are sometimes personalities that will prevent a church to grow. They're like acid because they're unbalanced. It's completely unbalanced. And they involve themselves in people's lives or they, their testimonies are so bad that the church gets a, test, gets a, gets a, a stigma on it. That's that church down there. That, that's where that guy goes. That girl goes. So, to everything there is a season, Solomon says. There are no continual mountaintop experiences and there are no continual valley experiences. Can I get an amen there? Uh, so these verses are preparatorial verses. They prepare us. Prepare all those who desire to think balanced that you know you are alive, but death does come. So that you can accept, hey, I'm alive. I'm, I am doing good today. I, I, I'm excited. I got joy of the Lord. But you know, if I'm going to be, uh, be balanced and not a fruitcake, I know that tomorrow may come some heartache. And my joy may faint a little bit. But that, I don't give up for that. I don't stop because of that. I just try to be balanced. Try to be rational with my thinking. So these verses, they're preparing me. You may, you may be poor right now. But great riches are coming. What are those great riches? It's not the lotto. Don't pay the lotto. Don't gamble on your life. But the great riches that God wants us to focus on is you may be poor on this side of eternity. You may, not, you may be poorer than a church mouse, but praise God, there are riches coming. You know where they're coming? In heavenly places. Sickness comes now, but perfection's coming. Why, why, does, why do people have to die? Because that's the balance of life. Isaiah 26.3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. So Solomon's thoughts here uh, turn to work now, to what we're doing, what we do with our, our labor, that it must be done with enjoyment because, because the ability to work is, my second point, is a gift of God. Let me read it and I'll expound upon it. What Verse 9, What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth. I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart, set the world in their heart, that, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning and to the end. That's just basically saying, God, God it, it, none of you, none of me are going to figure out everything there is about God. That's what that statement is. Verse 12, I know that there is that there is no good in them, but for a man to what? And to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before Him. So salvation, there's only one other place that we know that God says there's a gift of God in that phrase. We, I know there's different gifts, gifts of uh, encouragement, gifts of tongues, and those types of things that are for, for the Old 
uh, for the early church. But here, this is the only, I've studied this before, the only two places it says the gift of God. First is the eternal gift of God is salvation. So that's salvation. The, the ability to work and survive, to eat and drink, is the temporary gift of God. So we got a God that's balanced. He gives us eternal gifts. That, and what, what balance is that? Temporary gifts. You see, how, how often do we get unbalanced when we think life stinks? Life stinks. And what, what Solomon is saying, hey, hey you eating and you drinking and the work of your hands, rejoice in this. For this is the gift of God. You got to look at a difference, balance, but it's also understanding that God's gift to work and to labor with our hands and serve the Lord, it's just as it's just as powerful, it's just as a balance as is eternal life. As much as we uh, are on this earth and as uh, frustrating as life can be, it's only frustrating when we think uh, that working stinks. We start saying that this, uh, I just want to be saved and sit in a pew. Hello. God is so good to us that He provides us free eternal life and also joy. Get this, in eating and drinking and working. Drinking's not alcohol, of course. We can sit back and get a Bojangle biscuit with a large sweet tea and hallelujah, you can enjoy that after you, you mowed the yard or, or you, you went on visitation or you, you talked to your neighbor, you had a Bible study. Uh, God uh, taught Solomon a lesson and he's teaching us this, this evening uh, that we need to look at what the gift of God is and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. You ever ever received something that was a gift, but you really didn't think it was a gift? You didn't realize it was a good thing? It's kind of like your parents saying, you know, go out there and rake the yard, sweep the driveway. I told you that one already, right? You know, go clean your room, clean off the stairs. Who has stairs that are always cluttered? I do, I do. They walk right by it. They'll step. I even one day I, I took all the junk and spread it all over the stairs so they couldn't buy it. But they. <clears throat> but my fussing is a gift. Amen. You're welcome. You're welcome. How often you don't think about that? I mean, all he does is fuss at it. Well, you don't believe that's a gift, but I'm telling you, I thank God I had a mom and a daddy that fussed at me and, and, and disciplined me and taught me right from wrong and made me work. I didn't think it was a gift at the time, but thank God he, they put in me as something, a work ethic that I, I can't, I wouldn't ever want to give it away. Amen. Right now, we, sometimes we think about, oh man, is it a gift to God? You know, this life, it stings, it stings. Well, you're not balanced, that's one thing. You get balanced, you start feeling better. You get the right perspective. And you see this gift of God. I have the ability to work. Uh, have y'all ever seen those uh, paraplegic people? They blow my mind. I'm talking about where they have the, they have the, the you know, the, the little thing in their mouth. And they, they, they hit the computer and the computer talks for them. They can work. Isn't that something? I, 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 for me, if looking at that, I say, if, if I ever paraplegic, just, just, just pump me full of morphine, let me go into heaven. I wouldn't want to be that way. But the ones that I see, and I know they probably have their ups and downs as well, but, but it seems like there's something that God puts within us that even when you can't even move, your, you can barely even breathe. You can rejoice in eating and drinking. At least they can eat and drink. At least they, they can do... What is, what's the work they're doing? I'm talking about uh, there was something that Trump signed just a couple weeks ago about, uh, about uh, trying, you know, the, the, the Tri Act where they can try medicines and stuff. And they had paraplegics behind them that they, they have a hope. They're, they're working to get uh, for the cause. You see, we get so lopsided in our thinking. Uh, we think this way. Uh, well, uh, because I can't do this and I can't do that. Oh, life stinks. We ever thought about God may, may have made you for something else. You ask the little kids, what do you want to be when they grow up? And they say, they say I want to play sports. I want to be a rock star. I want to be a, a Christian rock star, of course. But I want to be this and, and I want to be that. All these big names and stuff. And you know how many make it? I mean, very few. 
Some are not devastated because by the time they get there, they realize, well, that's just, that's not me. I'm not going to do it. Uh, but you try to you push them for, to, to go dreaming, do what you, don't cost nothing to dream. But, but you have a few that are just, and I've seen them on YouTube. They, they make their own videos and they say, listen to me sing. And you're like, dear God, they missed their calling. It wasn't singing. You know, but they think they're they think they're Elvis Presley or whatever. They just and they're consumed. There was one. Uh, what was that one guy that was in the church and he he said he could sing like that? Uh, what was that song? What was I'm looking for a city? And he was going, I'm looking for a city. That... And and you think this guy's got to be off his rocker? Uh, but he's unbalanced. He was off his rocker. He didn't. He didn't put in perspective that you thought, look at the gift of God. God has given you the, you ought to rejoice in this gift. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, let me get back focused here. <coughs> it says, <coughs> whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. So it, it, it mirrors this in the New Testament. The gift of God is not recognized much in the life that's overly spoiled, is it? This temporary Temporal gift of God is not recognized much in a life that's spoiled. You always manipulate. You know how to get your way. You know how to get satisfied. But you're always struggling at the same time. Why is that? It got quiet, didn't it? Because you're, you're supposed to look at the gift of God as working. Not everything handed to you. You know how the, if we get a new president, you know how all, all the kids are going to go to college free? What By taxing you and me. And you know what's going to happen? There are going to be less, people, less kids going to college because they don't pay it for themselves. They could give a rip whether they have it or not. Just like anything we get that we don't pay for or we don't earn ourselves, we have less respect generally than we do if we worked hard for it. Ha! Amen. That's a little hack. The gift of God is not recognized to, to the spoiled. Uh, we are seeing the effects of the spoiled kids today in our society. They want everything for free. They don't appreciate what, what they have because they didn't work for it. It was given to them. Who cares if that thing costs $500? That's not mine. Who cares? I'll leave my, I'll leave my new cell phone and, and let people walk on it and stomp on it. I didn't pay for it. Mama just give me another one. And ain't the days when the cell phones were $39.95. I remember when they were $25, I thought they were too much. Now they're $1,200. Portals to hell, that's all they are. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. There's there are New Testament principles there is that work and eating. He said, Solomon is talking about, hey, you, you can eat, and you can drink, and you enjoy the work. It's all together. But New Testament says if you ain't going to work, you shouldn't even eat. There'll be some skinny youngins around here. Amen. If we're not careful, we will teach, uh, we will not teach biblical balance or that God gives us opportunities to work. He gives us opportunities to enjoy what we eat or drink. Let me just hit this and I'll move on to my last point. Is have we ever seen a day that we're all so stinking picky about what we eat? And the kids, I don't eat nothing but French fries and macaroni and cheese. I remember mom used to put it there and said, that's what you got. And I dreaded for that once a year mom decided to fix liver. Because I went hungry that night because I didn't eat no filter. Amen. I just abstained from all filters. Y'all, some of y'all are weird eating that filter. So be balanced. You know, just, you know, when you open up a cow, I just don't know who said, well, you know that little black brown thing that's squiggly and just all nasty? Let's fry that up and put it in my mouth. I just, I don't understand that. If we're not careful, we're going to teach this unbalanced thing that, that uh, uh, you know, everything's supposed to be given to you. Well, God does give us, He gives us the perspective to work. There's joy at the labor of our hands. And I know, I get it, we all need days off. I'm not talking about that. There's times when I take rest and I don't do nothing. And I may have several days I don't do anything, but then I start chomping at the bit wanting to do something. Uh, especially if I feel good. If I don't feel good, then I want to lay there and do nothing. But when I feel good, God has put it within my bones. He's put it in with all of us. The gift of God. Now lastly, as we learn to balance and give God glory through our labor, Solomon finishes this chapter out with wanting us to 
never forget that God keeps perfect records that He will use. Look at verse 15. That which has been is now, and that which is, is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there, uh, for there is a time. Uh, there, uh, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every good work. Did I skip something? I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time that there for every purpose and for every work. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that they, they themselves are beasts. Uh, for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Every, one, every uh, one thing befalleth them. As one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they all have one breath, uh, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity." All go into one place. All are under the dust. That's talking about going to the dirt. Uh, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Wherefore, I perceive, this is what he perceives, that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? So I want you to get what I gathered from this. There's a lot of lessons in this, but I only have time to, to share this particular point. Is that we see that in verse 15 that there's that which has been is now, and that which has been, uh, which is uh, to be, hath already been, and God requires that is past. Is that God? He's trying to summarize. And he says, "Hey, things are things have happened. Things are going to happen. God knows everything that's going to happen." Then he, he he backs that up and says, "I saw under the sun the place of judgment. That wickedness was there." And the, that he's summarizing all this and trying to get you in your, in your head what's coming on, and that God. God keeps good records. Sometimes we think that uh, what's in the past is forgotten, but God keeps good records. Sometimes we don't want to ever deal with what's in the past, but God keeps good records. Now understand, when you get saved, God does forgive you of all of our sins, right? But have you dealt with your sin of the past? There are certain sins of your past that you may have to deal with still in the sense of maybe apologizing. Maybe making a relationship right. Maybe confessing just to God that, hey, He forgives you of all of it, but the consequences may still be weighing on your mind and, and hindering your walk. And here I think Solomon is just trying to say, hey, God keeps good record. Judgment's going to come. And he says, I, I, I said in my heart uh, have, concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them. He's going to bring everything to pass, everything up. Everybody's going to die. Beast and man, they're all going to go to the grave. And you better be ready. Uh, what must be understood in order for our life, uh, bad deeds not to affect our eternity, is that the blood of Jesus must be applied, number one. But we have to understand that the blood of Christ has to be applied to our life. Do you know whether or not the blood's been applied? Judgment awaits every soul, red or yellow, black or white, young or old. The lost will be judged according to their works and be cast in the lake of fire. But judgment will be for the saved too. But the judgment, the judgment of the saved is about their rewards, how, they, how their works were on earth, and, and they'll be given the rewards or the lack thereof of the rewards. They, those rewards will be cast at the feet of Christ. <laughs> in Malachi 3.16 it says, Then they that fear the Lord spoke or spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and, and, and that thought upon his name. So we know there's the book of remembrance that God has recorded everything down, and, and, and he has a recording angel doing that. And so what does this all tie into the first part of the chapter? Is that God's writing things down. You're not going to have an excuse why your life's unbalanced when God's telling you how to balance your life. You're not going to have an excuse of why you complain so much about working or what you got to eat or don't have to eat because God said it is the gift of God to work. Why don't you work? And so he says there, there's going to be judgment. Every, hey, judgment one is we're all going to die. 
That's a judgment. There's a ju- so you've got a limited time to do things. But then he says God remembers everything. He's showing us He remembers everything. Now, for the lost, it means that you'll be judged according to your works, whether it be good or bad, and that'll, that'll determine how hot your hell's going to be. And for the saved, we're going to be judged at the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ, because according to our works, whether it be good or bad, and, it'll be, and we'll receive rewards. We're not judged according to our salvation because we're saved forever. We're judged according to our, uh, our works to, to receive rewards. In Revelation 20, verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of, the, out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. It's amazing how desensitized we become to our own sin. Be sure the farther you are from God, the more sin you will practice and condone. The farther we get away from God, the more you're going to practice and the more you will condone. How do we condone sin? Does that mean that you, you go down the street, you see sinners and say, hey, God thinks that's all right. God thinks... No, condoning sin means man, you, you see sin in your, your own life or your family's life and you say nothing about it. You're not willing to even speak up. That's a sobering thought, isn't it? So if we're not willing to speak up in our own life or speak up with our family's life, what does that mean? It means we've become so desensitized to sin. What does that mean that uh, we're not even aware? Our, our life's not balanced. We don't understand the gift of God. We don't put perspective what our lives should be like. The closer we get to God, in, in remember this, the further away you get unbalanced, but the closer you get to God, what happens? the more sensitive you are to sin. The more, more that music you can't listen to that even may be Christian, but it really makes you think about the honky-tonks or whatever it is. Uh, the, when you get more closer to Christ, the more you realize how I dress and how I talk and my attitude makes a difference. You, get, you become convicted. And I said that. I don't need to talk that way. I don't need to say that. I, I need to have, I need be, be, be happier. Man, I'm saved. I've got the gift of God, temporary, and I've got the eternal gift of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the closer we get, the, the less sin we practice and the more sensitive we become to sin and things that, that would distract us from God are not as much there. If you're working for the Lord to the best of your ability, then we can rejoice in our work because we know where we're going. In verse 22 it says, Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after? So all we can see the hereafter is what we read of the Bible, right? And it says, and he's talking about the only thing that we have to really show our efforts as a Christian or or our efforts as a Christian. It can say, who's going to bring him to see the hereafter? God's not giving anybody revelation, I believe, of heaven. You know, it's these people writing books. I, I need to write a book. I went to heaven. I went to hell. I went this way. They're just writing books. You know, if you want to believe that, you can. I'm not going to fuss with you. But I'm telling you, the Scripture said, who's going to bring you to see that? So you don't need to look it uh, up in heaven and, and just gaze up there all the time uh, to, to see approval uh, from God in some mystical, magical way. God says, oh, well done, you know, all that but we need to look at what our efforts are on this side. If I were to ask you to write what, down what you do for the Lord, not just in the church, but what you do for the Lord, how you spend your time, how long would that page be? How balanced would it be? I talked with somebody recently that they said, I talked about this balance in, in their life, and they say, they said, Preacher, well, I just got to work. I got to work so much. And I said, you use the bathroom, don't you? Why can't you, while you shower, and listen to the Bible? Right? See, when you really want to do something, you find a way. When you don't, you find an excuse. But I found this. I, I said, well, I, you told, I told the person, I said, you, you, you used to do this and you loved it. You gave you all your life to You, you just practice it and practice it. And there are things that we all can say, whether it be sports or some type of activity. And you gave your life, you gave money to it, you bought stuff, you got the jersey maybe, the hat, you know, or whatever it is. It may be vehicles, it may be boats or motor, whatever it is. Whatever you love the most is what you're going to serve the most. Hey, I've been there where you lay in bed and you think about what you can do the bus and then you wake up and say I ain't got no money because the bus costs too much 
So I might as well just leave it alone. Amen. <laughs> you can let things control you other than God. And that's when you get out off balance. No longer balance. You lose perspective of what life's all about. Life isn't about all gain, all wonderful, all retirement, all blessings and all this. Uh, I've heard people say, well, I'm just going to stick around until I can retire. Well, what if you don't make me retire? You're going to serve the Lord only when, you, when it's convenient for you? What kind of deal is that? Come on, man. What kind of deal is that? It's not a balanced deal. So I, I conclude with this thought. If you were to talk to somebody and they talk to you in a way that uh, they, they talk about, well, I just want to be happy. 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 You would conclude at some point this person's unbalanced. They're not, they're not thinking very straight because life isn't all. I mean, you could talk to a kid. I don't know why my life's so miserable. They make me, I got to eat McDonald's every day. And I got to, you know, I, I get punished and I get to my room and I get to play the PlayStation all night. And they, they're just unbalanced. They just haven't learned balance, right? And when they get old enough, they got to go get a job, and you know you got to go to sleep enough so you can work enough, and that, that, you got to have that balance. But if you sat and talked to them long enough, and they talked like that, you would think, man, they're, they're not. They're, they're. We would say they're a little bit off. They're just a little bit off. I'm not trying to uh, call names. I'm just calling it like you see it. You keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expect a different result, you're nuts. You're nuts. And a lot of people get that way. They think, well, I, I'm in church. Boys, you in church? Is it exciting? I'm in church. Why ain't my life? Why ain't my, why ain't my homework getting in my head? Because you ain't going to go do your homework. Hello, I ain't going to talk about any particular one of you. I served the Lord, and why did I fail that test? You failed the test because you didn't study. That's unbalanced. But you expect that from a young person, right? We get a little older, get a little gray in our head, we ought to do a little bit better than that. I can't believe they come and took my car. Well, when you signed that paper, you knew you couldn't make the payment. Hello? I've talked to people like that over the years. You're like, wow. So balance. There's a time for everything. There's a season for everything. Let's get balance where God wants us. Would you please stand? Father, thank you for the privilege of being to preach and thank you for the strength that you give me and to preach. I thank you, Lord, that you helped me realize in some areas I, I'm still unbalanced in. I do pray for our people here, those that watch, those that are present, those that are listening, that they get balanced. These teenagers, these young people realize they, they should be balanced. Uh, Father, do that work that only you can do. I can just be a, a, a distributor of your truth the best that I know how to. And God, it has to be your spirit that works in their heart. We ask it in Jesus' name. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, would anybody admit tonight that say, so I need to ask the Lord to help me be more balanced. Would you slip your hand up all over the building? Are you someone that needs to be more balanced? You lift your hand up. I think we all should say that. There's certain areas. So why not ask the Lord right now, Lord, show me those areas in specifics that I need to be more balanced. Show me that I, uh, how I can work and eat and drink and, and enjoy that and understand that's the gift you give me. Help me live a life knowing that you keep good records and I need to be cautious about my attitude. Is there anybody here tonight and say, Preacher, I'm lost I need to be saved. Would you slip your hand up? I'm lost and I need to be saved. Slip your hand up. you dismiss this time. You can pray. I know you can. I hadn't called on a youngin in a while. Dismiss this. Just go ahead.